Today's video is electric. We filmed an in-person uh, Dynasty Trade Talk video. My friend Adam from 4D Chess, some of you guys know him from Dynasty Devi, was in town. So we recorded a video because we're in the same Dynasty League together. And there have been a ton of trades happening. Fade the Fetal, shout out all the members. There's a lot of trades happening over the previous like 24, 48 hours. And you're like, yo, let's just like record uh, everything about the trade. Let's go through analysis. Let's go through player analysis, what we liked, what we didn't like about it. All that kind of shit. And at the end of it, we actually had an on-air trade happen because Tony's also in the league. He was in the office editing video, and I was like, get your ass in here. I want Amari Cooper from you. What's it going to take? And we got one done in real time on live television. Uh, it's electricity, all right? So if you're not following Adam, if you're not subscribed to his YouTube channel already, he does a ton of Dynasty-focused stuff. That'll be linked down below. Follow him on Twitter, and make sure you subscribe to our channel if you are new here as well. I love y'all. Enjoy the video. What's good, everybody? Welcome back into the 40 Chess Dynasty Trade Show. As you can see, this looks a little different than what you're used to. This is going to be very different. We're live from New York City. We got Nick Arcolano from Big Dog's Gotta Eat. We're at the HQ. And uh, this one's going to be special because we're actually not doing just trades that you're used to seeing from a bunch of different leagues. This one is an individual league breakdown that Nick and I are both in. We had multiple trades pop off in this league while I was here. So we figured, you know what, we might as well talk about the league as a whole, talk about the trades that went down, and, uh, you know, kind of give you our, our context of the league and then, you know, what we think of the trades. So, uh, Nick, appreciate you hopping on, man. Yeah, dude, I'm excited for this. Fade the Fetal is, I've tried to kind of skim out uh, a lot of the leagues that I'm in dynasty wise. And I play in a lot of leagues that are roster management. And I know you play a lot of like best ball. Mm -hmm. So for me, I still prefer the roster managing. I like, uh, I, I like setting my lineup. I don't like waiver wire, but I like everything that kind of, I, I feel like the league engagement is very high when you're playing in an actual roster managed league. Yeah. Uh, but I try to narrow it down to a certain number of leagues and <laughs> fade the fetal is like actually one of the very few dynasty leagues that I'm in. And uh, it's one that I enjoy very much because the settings are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like tier PPR. Yeah, so so the settings are um, it's tier PPR. So you got half point per reception um, from the running back position. Then the wide receiver gets a full point PPR, and then the tight end gets one point five uh, points per catch. So uh, the the settings definitely matter a lot. It's a start ten league, uh, twelve teams. So. Right now, the, the the way the league has kind of worked, in my opinion, is it's is there a point per carry? Uh, you I know feel what? like there's point two, it, maybe it, point two point per carry. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pull it up because okay. it might be. Um, I could do that while you're while okay, you're okay. Cool. What what you're looking at right now is we we had two teams that um, ended up leaving the league. Unfortunately, Senate, who I loved, was in the league. He he left, and then someone else left. So we Couldn't had pay two. up. He didn't leave. I kicked his ass out. Got rid of his ass. Yeah. Don't <laughs> so. disrespect me. <laughs> so. Um, we had two new people take over orphans and they looked at the roster and immediately kind of thought to gut it. Right. And so you have those two teams that are very much towards the bottom. Now you also have, as you'll see here today, a team that was wanting to rebuild that, that had been contending prior. So I think right now there's a pretty clear tier of teams that look really good. And then there's some bottom dwelling teams. Well, I, think, I think it's cool. Cause like there are clear dominant teams who are playing like win now. My team's super young, expected to do well, especially uh, per, you know, the, the tool that we'll get into, your tool today. Yeah. I still feel like I'm kind of in the tier underneath. Like, I still think I need a few things to break, right? So I think what we should do is, like, go through the trades and then at the end kind of, like, Love look it. at both of our teams individually and yeah, say, yeah. like, okay, what, you know, what kind of move can I make maybe based on my roster to, like, take my team over the edge and make me feel comfortable that I'm definitely going to get that. into that chip game. I love that. So let's. Let's, uh, and real quick too, if you, uh, watching this, if you tune into AMAs, um, on the 4th of July, I was thinking of, you know, what do I want the thumbnail to be and how do I make tie the holiday in? And I was like, set off fireworks in your dynasty league. So I made that as the thumbnail and kind of, uh, actionable advice on if you, in, like right now in July, you get a lot of stale leagues, right? And it's, it's just the dead period. There's not a lot going on. There's the news cycles are low. Teams aren't really thinking about playing to win and setting lineups in, in uh, you know, September. So I talked about kicking off, just kicking out trade offers and seeing if you can get one done and maybe, you know, kicking up the activity of the league. So I was pulling up some, uh, some deals I was looking at getting done and we, I got one done and Nick, I want, I'm, get, I'm curious your opinion on this because I mean, I got absolutely flamed in the chat. And here, here's the trade. So it was, I'm receiving Deshaun Watson. David Bell is also a part of the deal. For me, I uh, had no context in the deal. This is one he actually offered back to me. I've been asking about Watson for quite a while. I'm sending away Tua Tungvaluwa, Kenneth Walker, Trey McBride, and Chiggy. 
Nick, I'll let you kind of t- discuss it based on the scoring settings in the league and what you know about it. How you feel about this deal? How bad did I get gaped, man? It's like one of those first glance, you're like, oh, man. Like, this, <laughs> this, this is feels, ugly. This feels like a lot. It, it, it almost felt like um, you might have been able to use, like, just the left side of the trade and gotten that done. Like, Tua and Kenneth Walker probably would have got that done for Deshaun Watson. Yeah. I think the, the throwing the tight ends in, having this be a 1.5 PPR tight end with two younger guys who definitely have upside and, you know, Nothing proven, of course, there. Probably could have taken a tight end out of that trade, too. I think mm-hmm. probably still could have got that done. Yep. Uh, so, on paper, absolutely looks like an overpay, and, and the league chat for sure let you, <laughs> let you know about it. <laughs> right. um, I, I do think, though, this is one of those situations where, to me, it's very obvious like what you were going for. Yep. You are like, man... I'm a delusional Cleveland fan. Let me No, You were like, Deshaun Watson was an elite talent, right? Yeah. And was an elite fantasy option at the QB position. There is nothing harder to get. There is nothing more difficult to trade for or get in a dynasty super flex league than a top five, six quarterback. You got to sell yes. your arms, your legs. You sell a couple of your nipples and your hair as well. It, 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 it came out to a haul there. But Deshaun Watson is the dude that if he does become what he was – this trade makes sense for you. I understand like the the uh, direction you were going in. I think you probably paid a little bit too much there. I think you probably could have taken one, if not two pieces off this trade and like maybe swapped uh, a late third for both tight ends and probably still got that done. Yeah, and, and um, it's interesting because I, I was basically, uh, as soon as he took over, as this this is one of the orphan owners. So he, he takes over and I was asking immediately about Watson. Uh, all the points you made really is a big reason why I bought. Like I'm I'm very uh, in on Watson, not just because he's a Brown, but because I think he he has he's one of the guys that has been a top five quarterback at the position. And in this league, given the scoring and that it's start, we're only starting ten and two of which are super flex. If you can get two top twelve quarterbacks, like it makes up for all the gaps in between your roster. Here, here's the way here's the way I'd re look at it too. To, to, to give you a little bit credit here, right? So I guess like just kind of off the top of your head, like if you had to rank the top five dynasty QBs right now, it doesn't, you know, it's not a huge difference with the order. It's just, just like name them for yeah, me. Yeah, right so now. for me, it'd be Mahomes, uh, Allen, Hurts, Burrow, and then I'd probably put Herbert, but you could argue Lamar. Okay, so you had six right there. Yep. Trevor Lawrence wasn't even named yet. Yeah, and Lawrence is definitely in the. So in Lawrence the is there. Like, do you think you land Trevor Lawrence sending away that hole right there? On the on the I, bottom, I I highly doubt it. Right, you don't you don't get that, and he's the QB seven in exactly. dynasty leagues. Exactly. So if Deshaun Watson gets back to top seven, top six QB, like think about what I just said. Obviously, T Law is you know three four years younger and might have higher upside overall in his career than Deshaun Watson, but that makes it make more sense when you look at it that way. Where it's like ah, Deshaun Watson a lot of risk here. Like you paid so many assets to get it, but then I agree with you. You don't get that deal done for Trevor Lawrence by sending those four pieces. You no. don't get the, that deal done for any of the top seven QBs trying to send those four pieces. A thousand percent. And, and when you see, that's a great point and the way you illustrated that, because after you get past T-Law, there's, there's a lot of like debate, right? Is mm-hmm. it Fields? Which, by the way, I, we can talk about, I was trying also, to get Fields yeah. from you and yeah, you yeah. weren't you weren't giving me it for, I added, what, it was eight Fields for Acres, to Tua. Tua, Acres, and Chiggy. There you go. Yeah. So like... The, the same that type was, of... That was close for me. That was close for so me. So had I made that Kenneth Walker, you probably pushed the deal through maybe. Yes. Okay, there yeah. you go. Yeah. So, um, but point is, like, after that, you got Fields. And, and the tier after that's kind of a little more convoluted with Dang, how it's viewed in that? market. Would you have done that? Um, maybe. Now, I, I'm, now I'm sad. <laughs> I mean, I, you saw what I did here for Watson. Now, the difference for me in, in Fields and Watson is I love Fields, but I feel like his long term is a little more uncertain. Sure. Watson, for him, though is the next tier of guys where I could make a case where he could be right after Lawrence in market. And because that's the other biggest thing, market for me, Tua right now because of the concussions and all that, I actually still like him. But if he gets hurt again, like this is a cratering asset. And I don't have another quarterback at this time before I make this trade. That's part of the reason I made all this. And I think there's one last point. If I'm going to pay up for something and overpay, and dynasty is kind of what you talked about. It's going to be at the quarterback position for someone I think is in the elite tier. Got you. That's where my overpays are going to come pretty much I all the time. I think on paper, it's really easy to be like, damn, you fucked up. But I also, this is one of those trades where in a year we might look back and be like, smash. Yeah. Like you fucking, you killed it here. Like Trey McBride and Chiggy could just again be kind of average this year. Kenneth Walker could be in that timeshare with Zach Charbonnet. Tua could get hurt, have that concussion. And before you know it, you're like, damn, you got you got a Trevor Lawrence type beat over there for, you know, a few pieces that aren't, aren't hidden. That's, that's the thing about dynasty, man. It's just trades when they first happen, it's so easy to react like emotionally and be like this, this, this. Yeah. 
how many times the trades look so dumb in the opposite way you thought about it a year later? Oh, a thousand percent. Almost I've, every time. I've, I mean, what's funny is I actually, Watson was mine at one point, And when he was going through the bad news cycles, there was a point where I'm like, this is, this is bad. And he might actually sit out a full season minimum. He might never play again. Yeah. And so Senate offered me Najee for him straight up. And at the time, Najee was like an early second. I'm like, just in value and getting off of this asset just makes sense horrible trade one of my worst trades i've probably ever made in dynasty so that who, happens who, who uh who, who do you have t- at tight end on this roster so that was that's a, that's a great question so my tight end room i just drafted a bunch of rookies in this this class so this year yeah so okay. i that was another thing i had a bunch of disposable tight ends now i do think because they're down the line it's not like i have a true horde going where i can command like market uh presence because i have a bunch of the high-end ones i have a bunch of the lower end ones so my tight end room is I drafted Michael Mayer and Sam Laporta this year. Okay. Um, and I got Waller. So Waller's like my more contend now piece if he falls okay, through. So you, I mean, you have a solidified starter, though. Yes. And then I have uh, the younger guys that, like, to me, McBride and Chig, uh, I'd rather have, like, in my lineup this year than those rookies. But, like, value-wise, Laporta and Mayer got you. are right in that same range. So okay. that's why I would, they were disposable to me at this point. I actually think that, like, in tight end premium leagues, I love grabbing like six, seven tight ends on my roster and just kind of seeing what plays out. Because you could use them in flex, dude. Oh, a thousand percent. Well, the other thing too is uh, if one of these guys pops off and becomes like Goddard range and really usable, and my other ones that I have in value don't like give me that lineup solidity, like I'm going to feel like, damn, why did I do this? I think about, yeah, I think about that a lot too, because like, I remember, I think when we had the startup draft, I took Damian Harris. And I was, like, psyched about it. I was like, yeah, he's, he's young, he's good, whatever. But it's half PPR for running backs and 1.5 for tight ends. And I'm like, shitty tight ends are probably going to be worth more than Damian Harris in this league setting. And I think, like, more people don't really take advantage of that. And, and you, you really got to think beyond just, like, am I getting a great starter at the tight end position? And more so, like, what am I doing at my flex spot? When you got, yeah. like, double flexes, you got two flexes to throw in, there's a lot of times where a tight end in a 1.5 PPR tight end league is going to be a better option than, like, you know, the RB26 or the RB28 or something like that. A thousand percent. And then the, the other thing, too, is uh, when you get to some of these bye weeks and you get to attrition in the season, you, you can look at your roster and you thought, oh, my starters were great. But what happens? We all know, like, yeah. dude, what, what, who am I playing this week yeah. for, like, multiple weeks, right? So it that's – It gets bad. Yeah, I, tell, <clears throat> I was telling you in one of my other leagues, like, I went into the year last year with fucking Albert O as my projected starter. Oh, dude, I – brutal. Dude, you were preaching to the choir. I had Albert O as one of my main – guys in a lot of best ball leagues and he was a uh he was a roster clogger just giving me com- complete zeros so that actually goes down here um when i was here in new york i was here for four days so the following day shout out to schumer we're gonna get to his trade i'm Shoot I'm, me baby <laughs> so nick uh i've kind of known when i make that deal too yeah uh, we talk about 40 chess like thinking moves ahead i already kind of knew that i had schumer's pick and he'd been wanting to come get it back you may look at this trade and say, well, maybe you didn't need to do – now you didn't need to do the Watson we'll, thing. We'll talk about that real quick, about, okay. like, the, the, the point you made yesterday about, like, someone coming to you and asking for their pick back. Yeah, so one of the things I like to do is get at least, like, a couple first or three first or four first. And the more leverage you have on the class, you have, let's say, 25% of the class with three picks. And then when you have four, you have 33%. Now, that's just leveraging you can use later. But when you do that, especially if you get futures out, what will happen is – these teams that contend and they trade, they're mortgaging their future. They, things can go awry for those teams. And if those teams start coming back to you, hey, man, and the offer is either – it's either the DMs or the offer. is they're looking for their first back, that is literally the biggest signal of – pouncing time. They want their pick back because they want to take it to the bottom. Yeah, they're now, not asking for their pick back because they think they're going to win the championship. <laughs> exactly. Like, most people aren't like, yeah, you know, I just want this in case something goes wrong. I'm just going to keep it at the middle. A lot of people try to hide their motives <laughs> exactly. in, in, in dynasty trades, but you, it can't work both ways. So if someone wants a pickback, right, they're tanking, which means you target their veterans. Exactly. And so the, the, greatest, point, the greatest thing there is, and, and why it's difficult to navigate, though, is if I, like, Schumer's doing this, and I'm basically explaining to him and, and showing him via the trades I'm making an offering, like, I'm holding your feet to the fire. You're going to pay like this is an early first. Mm-hmm. The problem is, in reality, too, if, I, if he doesn't get a deal done and he forces this older uh, team to try to contend, I'm not going to reap the rewards of a top three pick. Yeah. He could make it a six, seven, eight team, right? So You also, it, I think, you have leverage in that position. As soon as someone's like, I'm rebuilding, it's like they cannot go into the season with those veteran assets. No, if you want to rebuild without your pick, it's like the worst thing in Dynasty. Mm-hmm. If you don't have your pick and you try to rebuild. So 
I have his 24 first I'm sitting on. And then after I made that trade, I'm like, all right, now that I got Watson secured, I'm ready to go to Schumer. I feel better about my actual solidified quarterback room. Now I feel like I can actually send this first away. One of my problems without making that trade, though, I didn't want to just give that pick up if I was still wanting to rebuild. So I, I end up making a trade in here now, Nick. So it's Dak Prescott, DeAndre Hopkins, who currently doesn't have a team, and DJ Moore. I give him back his 24 first, which he's going to start tearing down his team. Uh, T-Rock's 24 second, my 25 second, and Tajay Spears. So, Nick, I went from having, you know, Tua Tungvaloa and Danny Dimes as my quarterbacks with no quarterback three, to now I have Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, and Danny Dimes as my QB three. Wild. I feel a lot better about my quarterback room. Significantly better. This, like, this trade to me has the same energy as the other trade, except on the flip side, where I think the first thing I said to you was like, man, I feel like what you just gave up is basically like Dax value in itself. Yes. And you were able to, yeah, may, maybe like something else added on. So if that, if that first, if he goes full rebuild and he does it successfully and that first ends up being like the 102, the 103, then yeah, that, that maybe pushes it over Dak. But like realistically, if that ends up being the 1-5, 1-6, just like two seconds and Tajay Spears, that's Dax value in dynasty trades right now. So the fact that you got Hopkins and DJ Moore in a full PPR league where we're, are we starting three wide receivers? Yeah, three receivers, yep. Three wide receivers, like, I mean, you fucking murked that trade. Yeah. That was crazy. So, and that was where, as much as it felt like an overpay on the first one, like a lot for me too now, Nick, especially in lineup leagues, like you started talking about it, which I found was interesting because we hadn't discussed this at all. In lineup leagues, best ball leagues too, but in lineup leagues, roster construction and the way I have set up my assets is really big because I want to have in my lineup – I, w- I want to get closer to the elite quarterbacks, and I think if you can plug two of those in, you have a significant advantage at the, the quarterback position, and given it's super flex, like in only 10 starters, that's where I want to be big at, and then I, I needed wide receiver depth, so I got DJ Moore and Nuke Hopkins. We'll see where Nuke lands. I still feel like he last year looked really good. I, yeah. I didn't expect him to have that juice. It, it's almost like, I, I, like I, the D-hop piece is... It's it's not the piece that I'm like infatuated with, but it's like it's a an incredible. It, it's a way above average throw in on a trade. Exactly, you know? it's not and, a throw. He's better than that, but like, and he becomes my wide receiver four in right. this league, which is huge. I needed some depth at receiver. So, any anyway, I mean, the, the the deal I think really though, for me now, I feel like I can. I have the roster that I want to to compete. I have the quarterbacks that I feel good about. I don't have a truly elite one, but I have two good ones in Watson and Dak, and I have dimes as insurance. I also have leverage at quarterback. If I decided now, like if one of these teams that has elite quarterbacks that won't trade now later in the year isn't going well, I might be able to get to the table. Whereas before, like most times, Tua, because of the injuries, Danny Dimes isn't sexy. They don't really get you to the table of an elite quarterback. Yeah. Everyone wants like a quarterback back that's tiered down in the top 12, 15. Dude, Dimes as your three is incredible. And what you could do too is like there's a lot of young quarterbacks obviously coming up into the league. If you feel strongly about one of them or if one of them is doing like okay and people are kind of unsure about them, like Dimes is a perfect uh, flip piece for you where you could move dimes for maybe like howl in a first or yeah. pick it in a first or something something along yes. those lines you know what i mean and he since he's your three you don't necessarily need him to be in your lineup but now you just added an extra piece an extra first for the future that is um that's another great point that i was thinking about doing if it if the trade presents itself where you can essentially keep your quarterback three security but then gr- net additional pieces to try to build up the rest of your roster yeah, too 100 <clears throat> percent. so uh great points but you can't yeah you can't do that though if he's your qb2 exactly then you're like forcing pick it or howl or whoever into your lineup and you know right only having two quarterbacks in in that league is just not something i feel good about either um so anyway the uh the thing we were talking about like the league has started kicking off the chats were popping off um people at that point seeing the deal i made where i lost and this one where i won it was like there's chat going on uh you know we're me you and tony are all in this league we're talking about it in person Mm -hmm. the chat's popping off and there's a lot of deal offers being made only one more happened from it this is the last one we're going to talk about this one, to me, might be the most wild of all of them, but I'm curious your thoughts. Like Both yeah. of these two teams here, the interesting part to me, Nick, were these are two orphan owners that came in, and they're both rebuilding, essentially. What's that Bosco first? Bosco <coughs> was in the championship last year, no? Sure was. And uh, I'll pull Bosco up. left the league, though, and he's... No, he, he's still in the league. Still so Bosco's league. first Bosco's first is a part of the deal. So it's uh, Marquise Brown, for those on podcast, Marquise Brown, Kyler Murray, Trey McBride being acquired for Jawan Johnson... Javante Williams and a 24 first of Bosco's. So I'll, I'll pull up the simulator, but we, we ran it yesterday. Bosco's first in our league simulator is the 
the best team based on wins. Like he projects to be a very good team. So we'll he's say, already we'll, been a we'll high. We'll say the 110. Yeah. We'll just say the 110. There you go. Late first, let's call it. Okay. A late first Javante Williams and Juwan Johnson, man. Yep. Uh, so another trade where if that's the 110, Kyler probably wins that by himself. That trade. Oh, a thousand percent. So that that's another piece where, like, guys, if you are making moves in a in a super flex dynasty league, the QB has so much trade power that you usually don't need to add in all these additional pieces for it. So to get it's a really fucking weird, funny trade that like Arizona is that entire <laughs> side, which is all three of these pieces might be on different teams come next year. Kind of interesting, right? Yeah. Like Kyler might not be the Arizona quarterback. McBride right. will probably be in Arizona. Marquise Brown, I could see him being out of Arizona next year too. Totally. Which is kind of interesting and probably good because is there an offense in the NFL that has like lower value skill players? Probably no. not. Nope. And um, that's, I think that's probably how you get that done. Is Like to your point, these this is a – throwing in Hollywood and McBride is a very cheap stack option. Yeah. The, I, I, I think the biggest problem I might have with this trade is like Javante Williams is a guy that you could buy at low value right now, but he did not do that. No, well, that's the thing. So when I look at breaking down this trade, especially in a league like this, Javante was one of these guys that I was very in on. But when he's coming off that pretty gruesome knee injury, very similar to J.K. Dobbins, and we saw how that is, I'm not saying he's going to um, for sure have, you know, midseason having to have another surgery again and miss a bunch of time. But they tend to start slow and not have a great year, a yeah. year after an ACL surgery. It's a running back. So the shelf life is low. And then Jawan Johnson, I mean, Mike and I, we, you know, we, if you watch the show enough, we know we love him at discount. But to I your mean, point. Jawan and Trey basically cancel each other out in this trade. A thousand percent. But he, the, the point you made about Kyler is so big to me. Kyler Murray, if you're going to make a deal in a super flex league where we're, it's a lineup league where you're starting 10, most people won't even make a trade without getting a quarterback back. Now, the caveat to me would be if you're getting a first back and you're going to use it on a QB. So let's say this is guaranteed top five, six pick. That could maybe be the exception where he doesn't get a quarterback back, but he thinks he's going to just leverage himself into one of the rookies. Yeah. This pick doesn't even get you that. 110, most quarterbacks that are worth this shit are gone. No, those, are, those are the risky QBs. Like this, year you fall could, that far. this year, you might not even be able to get Will Levis in your league like, okay, at yeah, 110. So, so basically, imagine, right, and the draft class next year is going to be different. Imagine you, you swap that first-round pick, and that player name right there is Will Levis. Like, yeah, yeah. you're like, that's disgusting. It's awful. You know what I mean? You feel horrible about First it. looks cool because it says first, and, you know, anything could happen. Firsts are magical, but be practical about it. Like, understand what team you're trading with, understand what pick you're getting there, and then start to put a player name to the face there, and it becomes a lot more manageable in your head to understand what you're getting, what you're giving. Exactly, and I think even if you thought this value was correct, which, in my mind, the value's off, for the record, but if, it, if you thought it was correct... Not getting a quarterback back, taking on a running back of Javante's stature in a rebuild and getting a late first. It, it, the trade didn't make a lot of sense. I will say this, though. The one thing I can defend on Emperor's side is that I, I know in a rebuild, he's just looking to a, accumulate as many firsts as possible and leverage them later. But when you give up Kyler at this cost, the problem for me is eventually when you go to get out of the rebuild, you're going to have to use first and all your stuff to go rebuild your quarterback room. And getting rid of Kyler at this price makes that antithetical down the road. Yeah. What what I what I assume probably happened is if we asked him, I bet he has a very strong take on Kyler Murray. I think that's probably what this comes down oh, to. Oh, you know what? That's a great point, man. Go ahead, sorry. Did he say he said that? Because yeah. I know a lot of people in Dynasty who are like, I want we're just getting rid of him. They're like, I don't I don't like the injury, I don't like his like work ethic bullshit, I don't like his relationship with the Cardinals. I know a lot of people that are just kinda like out on Kyler. And that could be the case here. It doesn't mean makes him win the trade, but would make me kind of understand the psychology of where he's coming from. It's, it's funny you say that because it, it brought up a, a really good point that I, I missed on personally that I wanted to talk about for things for people watching the show that maybe don't have a deal happening that you can really pick up signals on. And that's a great point you made. I'm glad you said it because here, here's what happened. Before I made this trade for Dak, the second one, I missed this comment, but he said in here, I think I'm going to have to die with Kyler Murray since nobody wants him. Mm. And clues. when I saw my trade went through, right, and after I'm looking at it, that was on the top of the trade, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. By the time I asked him about Kyler, he'd already been so far along in dialogue with, the other, with this person that the deal goes through before I really even got to the table. Mm. So if you see stuff like that, like if someone puts in league chat or they're, sh they're sending you constantly offers of the same person, obviously there's a signal that 
they are fearful of this person and they want off. That might be a very good buy low opportunity. Great point you made, man. Yeah, I was just thinking about it because he's like, especially with these polarizing players, right? Like there's a lot of guys who just kind of sit in the middle and you're like, whatever, the Christian Kirks. He's just on the team. He's just going to give me fucking 14, 13, 12 points a game for the next four years or whatever. Guys like Kyler are the ones that you could really, really take advantage of. When there's polarizing values out there in Dynasty, usually an owner has some sort of very strong take on it. Yeah, and, and Kyler right now, because he's – uh, you know, small in stature, the team, the, the, basically they drafted him with, you know, Kingsbury and, and all that's gone now. Right. So he's small in stature. He's coming off of an ACL injury. He's a lot of his, uh, values baked into rushing. There is a ton of panic on him right now. So 100%. this I mean, is, this is well, the like, most panic I've ever seen, but QB yeah. three, four, I feel like going into the year last year in dynasty. And now he, he might like be like the eight, <laughs> nine, 10. In- yes. And that's, that's where I mean I've seen in some of these startups uh, like patrons have sent me there's fourth fifth round in startups which is wild to me. Yes. So uh, the, the other thing about I'll say to this about Watson like I'm kind of curious and I try to look at range of outcomes and I don't really see this one as one that happens often but if Watson plays really bad like he did the last six games for all next year. I wonder how bad his panic and, and his like it's value gonna, goes. To. Oh, it's it's gonna it's going to tank tremendously. And that's where the risk that I made to consolidate all that into Watson on the bad end would be looking like, oh, man, what have I done? I feel like him, but him struggling for an entire year would be sh- like I, shocking. I 1,000% agree. I don't see it actually happening, but if I look at the range of outcomes, if he played closer to that six-game stretch than he did like his, in his Houston form, people are going to be panicked on him, especially because the off-the-field issues seem to like somehow still be – I mean, uh, people don't want to attach themselves from From like a very common-sense standpoint, though – Bro, with all that on your mind, like with with probably having to be in court and talking with your lawyer like 24-7, just not, not like taking sides or anything, but just saying what he's going through as a person, there's no way it doesn't just affect you on the field all the time. It's got to take – like you're a quarterback. You need to be the most mentally checked-in player on a football field, right? Like you need to know everybody else's position, everybody else's job. You need to be watching tape at an insane rate. You, you need to understand everything at a level that other players don't, and if you're – your brain is not 100% on like the team and the football game at hand, you're going to, you're going to struggle a little bit. I guarantee you Watson was feeling that way. And we're all people we've been through shit in life where, you know, you get through those stages and you feel a lot better and you're able to capitalize and be more energetic and more focused. And that's, it, I, that's it, the I, biggest takeaway for me. With honestly, from what you said too, I've thought about this a lot where uh, last year, especially when he was going through it and I'm watching the Browns with Brissett out there and wanting Watson back. Watson is it's similar to woods in a way where like, Watson was this great off the field character, thought very highly of everybody was always praising him. So that's basically what he's known all his whole life and tenure playing quarterback. And then he's going to come into the middle of the season towards the end of the year that he has to play perfect to get this team to the playoffs. And there's a lot of like, now everyone looks at him and he's been dealing with all this negative off the field energy. And I think that definitely for a quarterback can mess with your head. It takes like a toll, a totally yeah. different situations ever been in before. Yeah, just like from a very pure like human standpoint, that shit. Like I've I've gone through shit where like I'm like God damn like at my work at my job and it affects like if I'm going through something where as a business something happens to us right and I'm like I got still got to make like three four videos a week those don't come out well yeah because I'm like struggling with something internally so I'd imagine a lot of that shifted over to him too and you can say oh he's a professional but like. Like the overall mass of what happened to him, it was like the headline of the sports world for a very long period of time, and yeah. deservedly so, obviously. But like, regardless, if he's your fantasy quarterback, this is this is real. And and you know what else too? Like, imagine if you had to do that, but then you're gonna go play in front of all the people that are like your biggest critics. He had his first game is in Houston. Remember that? Yeah. That was wild. <laughs> that was so sus. By the NFL, you know, bro. like how crazy was that? Yeah. And like with, with those situations you go through, like time does for the most part heal all things. He'll be dealing with that for the rest of his life. His mental, his mental's fucked probably for a long time, but time does heal. He will get, he'll have like a support system within the Cleveland franchise, obviously. Yeah. You know, so I'm sure he'll be more comfortable in that locker room around those players and build friendships with them and stuff and, and feel more comfortable. So that to me, like everyone could cite stats and analytics and stuff for Watson. It's a very clear, like, human part of what's going on there for me. <clears throat> a thousand percent. And, and sometimes, it, it, as great as all the data points we have, there's other things that go on than just, uh, than just you know. Sorry, Tony looks number. just hung over his shit right now. Tony. Oh, man. He, he looks he, like he's hurting. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's editing, kind of. He's just looking in the screen. That's, that's our champion. That's our lead champion right there. <laughs> that's... I thought we weren't going to say that. Damn it. I yeah. Just, I, he looks like he needs a little to- pick-me-up. Tony, Tony uh, did win this league last year. That's enough of that. 
And Nick Nick is clearly ahead of him in the league simulator, so that that's gonna be the last time. Eight uh, points over the span of fourteen games. I'll take it. That's gonna be the last time Tony <laughs> wins the league ever again. And anyway, with this deal at, 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 in totality to finish this specific deal, I understand selling low on players or selling um, on a point with players that you're panicked on or are fearful of. To me, though, like Kyler Murray, even at his worst, is still solidified because he got that paid contract. A, a top fifteen quarterback ish range player. That's young enough where I'm just not moving for this yeah, type of like price. even if it's not in Arizona, he's getting another starting job elsewhere. And like we know when he's on the field, maybe you don't like him as a real life quarterback, but he's shown plenty of stretches where he's averaging fucking 25 points per game as a fantasy QB. That that's and he's a, also got a Canada. He is a good he is a good quarterback. That's such a great point about like rushing quarterbacks in general. Talk about like, we can use Fields as an example because you have him. Like there's a there's some people that are panicked on Fields' current price because well he was awesome last year because he ran. But he didn't throw that well, and if he doesn't throw well soon, his long-term longevity and security in the league may be questioned. With Kyler Murray, though, the difference there for me anyway is that Kyler is already paid. Like he, Even if he can't throw the ball that well, which I think he's an above-average passer, but even if he's not the greatest passer, that bag secures him four years of what you're talking about, which yeah. in fantasy, he doesn't have to be a great thrower or even win football games. He can run really well. We've seen him be very, very good on the ground. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the Kyler hate on terms of his, like, arm and stuff has gone way too far. I remember, like, straight up watching him back in, in high school. I saw him play in high school. And I was like, damn. And then he won, like, Gatorade Player of the Year in high school. He's, like, the best, co- best football player in the nation. Goes to college. And I remember – watching his first start, and I tweeted this out, like I have it on record, I was like, go grab Kyler Murray, Heisman, it was like 45 to 1 or something like that. Each week it went down 45 to 35, down to 30, down to 20, yeah. down to 12. He nailed it that year, and I had like so many tweets being like, yo, thank you for telling me to nail Kyler. I was like, he's such an electric athlete, he's so explosive. We forget how explosive he is as a runner, we yes. forget how, he's got a cannon of an arm, I'm telling you, like, yeah, the Kyler hate has gone too far, It's I think. definitely too far. Now, especially when it's a trade like this, I mean, I've seen trades that aren't, aren't quite this low, but... Um, one, one thing I wanted to do, too, Nick, before we get out of here, th- those were the three trades that went down. The fireworks kind of happened. It, I was hoping there would be more deals done, but the leagues, the teams, some of these teams I think are so split. And like, after Schumer made that trade, there wasn't a lot of players that he has on his team where people are willing currently to pay for pay a first for. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of deals, I think, imminent, um, even he, though He's in that activity. middle range where it's like Geno Smith. A QB needy team, I could see if you're a back end first, maybe you go for it. If if you feel like he's, it, it's still even like unsure there. Is right. he really the QB of the future? You got Kamara, who no one's paying a first for right now. No, uh, Christian Kirk, uh, Russell Wilson. You know, you have some veterans that are like borderline that are not good enough to actually like move the needle on your team. So yeah, you I feel like if you're paying a first for for a player, they need to be an, a needle mover or like a top half player of your starting lineup, something like that, where I don't think any of these guys really get there. So he's probably going to have to give up a lot of these guys at value. So when you start seeing trades like this, understand it's like blood in the water. You got to yes. become a shark quick. Yes, and that's and that's the thing. Like part of, part of when I gave Schumer that deal, the reason I wanted uh, DJ Moore in it as well is – like that was DJ Moore and, and Nuke is cheap enough right now that I think he could be a positional difference maker for another season if it's if if he goes to the right situation and plays healthy. The the thing is I wanted to get DJ Moore off of his team and Nuke because outside of that, like those are the pieces I think I could extract from the deal that were still like taking value away from his team that made it make sense for me. Yeah. And it didn't leave him with a lot of uh, room for that. But I'm cu- curious if you I want to talk about both of our teams and then maybe some. Um, you know, just like structures of, of what we think we're going to be moving into with our teams or deals you're looking to make. Not necessarily a specific player, but like structure-wise, what you're looking to do with your team. So, again, I have a very young team. Like, you look at my starting lineup, Fields, ETN, London, Pickens, Pitts, Ramondre. Um, and, and it's kind of like I need a couple of these guys. Like, they all have a ton of upside, yeah. right? But I definitely need like three or four. I need Pitts to hit that soon I need, or London to hit that soon. I need ETN to be better than what the fantasy community is kind of like reeling about him right now. I need Ramondre to hit. Like, I have a lot of guys who love the upside of him, but I realistically need three or four of them to like really hit this year. You yeah. Know? And that kind of makes me nervous. My QB position is not great either. But I do think the good part about a super flex league, an upside guy like Fields gives me a lot of leverage that if he if he plays to where Fields played last year, I don't need my QB2 to be like a top 10 QB. Man, so that's I, such a great point, yeah. Yeah, like, I, 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 I do like having strong QBs, obviously, in a super flex, but I've also won championships with mid-tier guys, like the QB12 and the QB17, right? As long as the rest of your roster is, like, kind of nice there. So my QB situation is a little bit fucked. I did, fortunately, get to draft Bryce Young this year. 
So he's in my lineup and probably better in the future. But the rest of my QBs, like I have Fields, Bryce Young, and then I have some mixed mosh of fucking for my QB three, Sam Howell, Baker Mayfield. It, it, it gets kind of ugly there. So I might need to make a move for a quarterback. But the, the problem is, it's again, it's it's hard to trade for quarterbacks. Like I probably should have went and fucking t- uh, targeted Kyler. Kyler, yeah. yeah. It, I think we, we I think we both in hind, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Too busy fucking filming TikToks to know what's going on over here. Dude. Hindsight's twenty twenty. If we know that this deal was capable, you and I would have been in this guy's. DMs and offers most, com- most common group chat quote is why, why the fuck didn't you offer me that you I know, know like, I would have given you more and you know what I I, sh- I hate honestly hate Monday morning quarterbacking deals when you weren't out there trying to get a deal done Facts. it's like dude Facts. you yeah. don't act like you were making all these offers and that he chose someone else over you it doesn't that's, happen that's very very true yeah um and then what I was gonna say by that fields point so on our warp warp tool wins over replacement players one of the things that I think you hit on which is so key when I look at this line and the graph of it so. It's very steep in, like, the top five. Now, year to year, this is going to change. And players, this isn't predictive of players, right? you got to ultimately hit the player to have the warp. You, you, last year's quarterback three isn't going to be necessarily be this year's and mm-hmm. 10 and all that. When I look at the warp to one, I think, uh, one thing I definitely think that you hit on, which is very true, top 12 quarterbacks are significantly more valuable in wins over replacement than basically everyone. Um, other than there's some running backs on the high end, uh, high end assets that will hit, but like Justin Jefferson last year in warp was 2.27. That's the highest Justin Fields to your point was 1.71, right? So, I mean, he's almost as, is valuable to a, your team as Justin Jefferson was not quite, but there's, there's few skill players that rival what Justin Fields means to your team, how he played last year. So right. the point is, if you have, like, he was seven last year. Now, if you look at the top four, those guys are crazy. those are absolute haymakers. But my point is, if you have a top 12 guy, and especially, especially like a top five-ish guy, that can carry deficiencies on your roster. And I think the expectation is for Fields to be up there. Because I think, like, this takes into account those first four games he had Dude. where he averaged like 10 points a game. They didn't let him run the ball at all. If you look at it, if this chart was literally just, oh, you can filter by weeks. Yeah, yeah. Go to, uh, go, uh, I can put, do, I can pull put it, it up. Put it to like five or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll run five to 17 um, to see how great it was. There you go. He's at five. Higher than and he's, and he's And he's actually higher than all the skill players other than probably, what is that, Jacobs. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, and that's the thing too. That those first four weeks were brutal, man. It's amazing. Speaking of the Kyler Murray panic, I remember seeing deals like that for Fields, where people were so panicked on Fields. The, the fickle beast of dynasty managers, Kyler Murray, when he threw that pass into New Hopkins in the end zone to win the game, was untouchable. And now it's like, look, I want to get rid of him in a couple of years. So it's, it's Kyler's, Deshaun, it's all these dudes, man. It takes one little break for. I think we're like program. That's what you got to shift your mind. Quarterbacks are not the same as other position players Mm -hmm. like it's easy for us to get up and down on running backs like Javante's value swings tremendously and it should because running back positions are they have such a short shelf life and momentum matters yeah you know what I mean like totally you're in your prime you miss one full year like there's a really good chance that that just shot you down your career numbers like 50%. 50%. You know what I mean? Like, you need the momentum of being the workhorse into multiple years in order for you to, like, capture your prime. Whereas yeah. quarterback, you're, you're, if, if you're good, if you're talented, you're going to last for a while because you don't need to be fucking running a 4-3-2 in order to be your best. A thousand percent. Like, Javante right now, the way he's trending reminds me so much of the, the, great, the great rookie class of 2020. We look at, you know, guys we were super, super hyped about, like Cam Akers, DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins. Look how they all have trended in Dynasty coming yep. off of different type of injuries. It's like all them, yeah, like J.K. Dobbins missed the year, and now, like, the momentum of what he was is just, like, kind of zapped. Exactly. And don't get me wrong, he's going to be usable in fantasy, but his Dynasty value has – Never going to recover um, at the running back position. So um, I, I honestly think your team's really good. You have all your picks still. You you have plenty of different moves um, to make. Yeah. What what if you're looking at my roster right now? What, what's something that you would think about doing? Yeah. So I mean, I think I definitely think for me personally, uh, it's going to be tough to do because the, the high end quarterbacks are all on contenders. Mm-hmm. If I was able to leverage a Bryce, as much as I love his upside long term, and something else into a more solidified elite quarterback that'd probably be something I would be willing to do because I think like Deshaun Watson like yeah if you were able to get Watson <laughs> or Murray before they yeah. got bought up um I'll maybe him to you so uh that that would be that would have been something I would do and then I think at this point though if I can't make a move like that I, I'm personally waiting and seeing on some of these guys yeah. and then as your team you, you you'll be able to assess so much better in middle of October-ish 
what you need and what's hit versus mm-hmm. right now doing it in June. And now you can leverage your first end of the equation and probably go buy an asset that you actually need, whether that's yeah. a receiver, a tight end, a running back. Because because being having such a young team, like so I got dudes like, you know, Khalil Herbert, James Cook, Rashad Bateman, Kadarius Tony, where all their floors are incredibly low. But exactly. like, maybe they'll be good. Like who who fucking knows? Well, about one of those players. dudes pops off and now all of a sudden you have a different flex conversation completely than you have right now. Yep. So I mean, I would explore um wide receiver tier ups if it was there and quarterback tier ups. I just know the this is one thing you gotta know about your league, everyone listening, is sometimes it's easy for us to talk in a generic vacuum about a trade or what you should do. But I know in this league, those two things are gonna be hard to do, like the way this league's picked over. So personally, if if you couldn't make a, a very clear wide receiver tier up to like a Tyreek Hill type or something like that, I'd probably wait and try to leverage your first into the wonder, uh, equation in like the fall. So I got London and Kyle Pitts. I wonder I guess two questions. Yeah. Like it's funny you say that. I'm wearing the Pitts jersey. Yeah. Nick's a big ATL fan. And second, uh, I noticed that, and I'm curious, I'm curious well, what you got. Well, uh, I'm thinking two things. Like, one, I could either buy into one side or the other of the conversation and okay. say, hey, this is like passing offense. not going to be – it's going to be hard for both of those guys to eat. Uh-huh. I can move off one of them. Both of them, like, even – so that conversation happens. People are like, oh, they only throw the ball fucking 22 times a game. There's no way they could both eat. But their values are still sky high as individual talents in Dynasty. So I can move either percent. of those off for – Halls. So, yeah, for halls. Or on the flip side, I could say, hmm, what if like the minority happens where Desmond Ritter is actually pretty good and yeah. makes his offense usable? And that's someone I could probably get for pretty cheap, you know? So, like, maybe do I buy into the Atlanta offense right now, Ooh. London, Pitts, and see if I can get Desmond Ritter for, I don't know, maybe I could, maybe I can just go Howell for Ritter or like make a swap based yeah, on my team. You actually could definitely, uh, that would not be something I hate at all, um, Ritter for Howell, just because it's, it gives you the upside of if Atlanta hits and Ritter hits, you're more rewarded than if Howell becomes good, right? Yeah. Now the Atlanta situation is tough to figure out for Dynasty. It totally dude. is. I'm Ritter at, at, at a cheap cost. I'm perfectly fine, and I th- I think the interesting part about those guys is if you end up deciding you want to win, unless Ritter does become legit, I don't know that those guys this season, yeah. like like they may be solid. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying London. I, I I want London shares. I have plenty of him and Pitts, but I don't know that those two guys being staples in your lineups this season is a like a true piece of a contending team that wins in a lineup start time. That's what makes me nervous because it London Pickens Pitts are all guys in my lineup right now that I feel like I'm kind of depending on, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know if a championship team will have those guys. And, and you know, what's funny is, uh, the, the cycles of dynasty values, like right now, all the old guys are unsexy. And if you look at like keep trade cut, for example, they're, they're pushed away down the board. Everyone right now is like all youth. And then, by October, you know, let's say Pickens isn't really mattering in points per game or London, those type guys, you'll see the value swing totally different in the fall where I'm, things I'm, go yeah. way down. I'm, like, thinking about right now moving a guy like Pickens. Like, oh, P- Pickens, I think, is – I'll be honest. I, for a veteran that I don't like him. If you can move Pickens, even if you have to add something to get into a higher-tier veteran, I'd I was going to totally say, like, Pickens in. for Cooper. Oh, I mean, that would be a smash for me. Yeah. like Total I, smash. I don't know if that works. Maybe I could add something into that, but, like, I, I don't think that's – unrealistic depending on where i don't know what team cooper's on right now depending on where they are and they're like actually i think tony has cooper yo tony you got amari cooper in faith the fetal you want to give him to me for a young wide receiver pickens you hate pickens you got picket too problem is i hate pickens. don't you have picket yeah you just gotta put the volume up on it though boom this is riveting stuff we got actual trade discussion happening on the trade number show. number two <clears throat> all right so tony what would a trade I'll try to mediate this. What would a trade with Nick look like? Like, what would it take to get uh, Amari Cooper for Nick? Like, what does that look like for your team? If you had to pull up, I can give you his team if you need to see it. Like, what would it look like? What do you want back for Amari Cooper? See, I think my real weakness on my team is I don't really have a second quarterback. I have Joe Burrow, and then my QB two is Kenny Pickett, who I'm hoping can. That's you know, your QB two. That's my QB two is Kenny Pickett. QB three is Jimmy we found G. Found the weakness. So you would take Deontay Johnson over George Pickens straight up in Dynasty? Yeah, I, I think I would. Okay. okay. So that feels problematic because I, I wouldn't right there. Well, so we're at way Well, that's where values. I'm saying what does yeah. it look like for him because yeah. like, this is something – a lot of times what I find when I'm trading is I'll say, I'm trying to make a deal happen in a certain structure, but the person's not valuing back at all. Like Pickens mm-hmm. – you're trying to move Pickens. He doesn't value Pickens appropriately. It's, yeah. not, it's a moot point for the deal. So that's why I'm asking what do you think because maybe there's a deal that makes more sense that you're talking about. So like you want more quarterback insurance or someone that might be better than Pickett possibly. Right. Like if you would do – I have Fields and you, Bryce Young, and then on my bench I have 
How do you like, feel about like adding like a not like Howell and Baker? Mayfield yeah, Howell and Baker as like my QB three. What about a Howell hey. type? Not not necessarily one for one for Cooper, but like does does Howell plus something get him to the conversation of getting you know a wide receiver like Cooper? The other pro- okay, it was Howell and Baker. I almost like Baker more than Howell. Honestly. Okay, well, what about like Baker then? There you go. This is why you do it. This is why you ask him what he wants. Uh, I don't. I don't believe in either of those guys. Ideally, the trade. You if need somebody QB three though. You probably do want insurance at the quarterback. I would position. feel fine with Jimmy G as my QB three if my QB two was more promised than Kenny Pickett, though. Okay, so really, so so then I, I didn't realize you had Jimmy G too. So you you don't actually you're looking more so to buy like a, a higher end quarterback than Pickett, essentially. Yeah. It, I, well, that that that's honestly a problem in dynasty superflex. It goes back to the points of those trades we just talked about, right? Like I made that move for Watson. Kyler got bought here at. Uh, kind of a ridiculous discount. I, I should have bought Kyler back. We, we, all, we all said that now. All right. Do you like... So here are the guys that, that I would totally be willing to kind of like move off of, that I would put on the trade block, and you tell me if you have interest in them. It's Debo, Pickens, Rashad White, either of those quarterbacks I named, Khalil Herbert, James Cook, Rashad Bateman, Kadarius Toney, either of the rookie tight ends in Green Bay, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft. I've Hendon Hooker, too. Those guys, I'm like definitely, I could definitely part ways with. What about like, Bateman? There we go. I like, yeah. I mean, what about him? Yeah, I like him as like a a young young prospect that has good potential. I wouldn't trade Amari Cooper straight up for him now because I feel like what I'd do you want to what do you want to attach to Bateman to get to Cooper? Real quickly, I don't think I would do this, but in Dynasty, do you like you like Debo more than Amari? Ooh, yeah, I think I do. It's it's not far off, but I. I I don't know if I want to do a lateral move there. Yeah, I'd yeah. rather give you like pieces that you feel like you're building your team on, just so I can get one solidified piece in Cooper. Like if you like Bateman and another player together, would you split Amari Cooper, Bateman and Tony? Wait, what? Bateman and Tony for Amari Cooper? Yeah, Bateman and Tony for Amari Cooper. I think that deal makes a lot of sense. I think it does too. Um, oof. Okay. I, uh, I think I would do that. Okay, I kind of like that. Gives me a little more depth. Gives me a little more youth. I will say, though, I do feel like depth is something I already have. So getting more depth may not be the move, but I do really like the price of Bateman. What's your, what's your depth relative well, so, to well, like so here, here, So your depth right now. Uh, so my starters don't feel super high end. Right now, I would say Cooper, Michael Pittman, and I don't think Jerry Judy's my three, to be honest. I think maybe Ayuk's my three. Okay, but then I have Deontay Johnson, Jerry Judy. I would say this though, like um, realistically, I, I get your point. I would say like right now you have you, after this trade you would have Pittman, Judy. If you made it, you would have right. Pittman, Judy, Ayuk, Ayuk, Deontay, and then realistically though, also, I mean, this, like you this want gives that, you, a lot you want of that upside too. because you outside of that you're deaf. You got to remember when there's bye weeks and there's injuries, like somebody's gonna get hurt. It, it's just the way Definitely it works. True. Like, you don't want to be reliant on Romeo Dobbs or DPJ in a league like this, very likely. Right. But we're also talking, like, just wide receivers. Yeah, no, no. I, I, but, like, okay, what's, what's your depth at the other positions that you – I mean, like, I, when I look at your bench currently, obviously, I, you really should be a starter. Um, but, like, there's no one I'm sitting here like, yeah, that makes a ton of sense to start weekly. Now, they could be, but, like, today, no one of those guys project that. Where, like, Bateman and Tony, definitely there's a scenario where they are worth a flex. Stuff. They're also both, flex like, under start. 25, I yes. think, too. And both yeah. either if either one of them like has a great start, we know how Dynasty works. Those are like names that people are excited about, and they, they get value bumps because of their just inherent Dynasty value. Definitely. So I mean, I'm Come not. On. I'm I'm not. I think you, that deal would make sense it. if you do you it. Oh, it. let's get it done on the trade show. First need, deal happening live on the on the Dynasty it. trade on, show, man. My telephono. Yeah, he's got to get his telephone to make it happen. You see that? Made a should deal should, happen live. Here we go. You know what? We just thought of a new service, a new uh, a new product for you. I love that. Let him consult a trade for your mediate for your the trades, man. Would you actually? You know what? <laughs> Were you going to talk about a pick instead of a receiver? No, I wasn't. I was. I was just going to go through your receivers and see, like, value wise, who you would swap Cooper for, like, who you would be okay being like, ah, oh, you could take him instead of Cooper. <laughs> to be honest, is there I, anyone I mean, that you wouldn't? Well, I feel like they're the same value. Yeah, I kind of think Cooper. I think that's the right one for his team. I think so, too. I think he's my most valuable receiver, actually. Is that is. weird to say, even though he's, like, significantly older? I think I would value Ayuk over Cooper. <clears throat> really? I, I definitely would value Ayuk over, over Cooper. Um, would you Cooper give Ayuk in that trade? Yeah. I think that's the way you answer that question. Right. You value the most. Yeah, exactly. I think his uh, his initial reaction 
makes me know that the answer yeah. is no. A lot of times, though, like, I'm a very uh, short-sighted dynasty player, though. You know what I mean? Like, I value next year, I think, way more than a normal dynasty oh. player does. You know what I mean? So, so maybe, like, so maybe, for me, so maybe, Cooper— So maybe you would rather do Ayuk, then. Because Ayuk— Like, here's the situation for Ayuk. I don't know how— here, it, Actually, I wouldn't do Ayuk here because I already have Debo in my starting lineup. Oh, good point. But I would like to trade with Ayuk, too. But I'm going to send it through as Bateman and Tony for Cooper. I, th- I think that trade makes act- actually makes I, sense. I think it's even. I think it works. You're just trying to get a deal done today. Yeah. I mean, we just, just, we're live on it. We got it. We got to get it. something done. We got it. All right. I see it. I'm a counter. Throw in an extra second, and you got yourself a deal. All right. Like, this is, this is how <laughs> trades just go to shit. I like it. Bang. It just happened. There Beautiful. It is. Let's go. There we go. A fourth trade. So now we got a fourth trade to review until Noah gets here. So I, I, where would you where would you put in redraft? Where would you put Amari Cooper? Like wide receiver, what? So we just drafted him in underdog yesterday, didn't we? Maybe I don't remember. He's like somewhere in probably like the ten to fourteen range, I think for me. Okay, I was I, gonna say twelve, fifteen. Yeah, I was gonna say bullishly, I could put him inside the top ten because Watson's there. But I think I like I'd say fifteen ish. He was the nine last rough. year. Yeah. I think like like projecting that is definitely like a little bit too optimistic. But I think a little bit off that is probably realistic. The other the other thing you have to bake in with Cooper, like I love Cooper. Uh, I think he's with Watson for a full season could be awesome. You have to bake in in Dynasty especially. Well, I think a deal like that makes sense is Cooper, if he smashes again, is going to be you'll, – you'll like him for that season. But if he gets hurt, like we've seen it. It's been a while since it, but he, he dealt with a lot of injuries in, in oh. Oakland and that. If he gets hurt, you're talking about like – He's someone who's, whose value could – like this time next year, his value could be worth a, uh, like a back second round and, and or something like that. I'm going to give you last year a, a really good example of this who was uh, smashing to a totally different degree. Look at how Cooper Cup was last year. Winning people leagues, he gets hurt and teams are like, oh, shit, what the hell do I do? And guess what, what happened when they went to the market? Nobody was interested in buying that old that, asset at the someone time. Someone got cup in this league? Because I'll fucking trade for his ass right now. Believe me, that's what I've been uh, I'm about try- to take I've my been, team from young to fucking. <laughs> I've been trying. I'm about to, to trade the, Bateman to and Tony for Cooper <laughs> Cup. <laughs> he's going young All right, to we got a challenge. In. Whoever can get Cooper Cup first wins. I'll tell you this much. I've already been in DMs, and uh, Bosco hasn't really been Not interested. Budged. Well, he wants, like, he told me Garrett Wilson plus, and I'm like, okay, well. I'm about for to Cooper send him, like, yeah. Damn. I was about to send him Drake London or something. Now, I mean, Drake London plus, maybe he gets he's done, but he wanted me to send him Devontae Smith plus or uh, Garrett Wilson plus. And I'm just like, I like Cup, but that's just too steep for me because those guys, I think, could still be positional advantages even being young. I'm about to send London, Pierre Strong, and a third for Cup. <laughs> I would send that. I mean, I'll be honest with you. There are people right now that would take London straight up ahead of 100%. Cup. 100%. Actually, it sounded ridiculous when you said it, but now that I'm thinking about it, Cup – did Feels like a red you know flag. Would, you know what I would hundred cons- percent. I would consider there. Though. I'm just, you know what? I'm sh- I'm getting emotional because we're on a podcast Whoa. right now. I'm not sending offers. There, there it is. There I it think is. About this, we just made one. Now I'm fucking. You know. Yeah. You get you get trade happy. You know that's good. It's good to get, get trade happy. happy. I'm usually sad. Now I'm happy. Look at this guy, man. We got a we got a deal done. Um, Tony adds some depth. He already still has a pretty good receiver room, in my opinion. Ju- yeah, Judy. that what you do have a good. I didn't realize. That I just you, don't. Was, I just don't have. I don't think I have a wide receiver one though. Yeah. But I think in a PBR league, that's fine. Like, you'll probably get, like, 13 points a game from all those guys. Yeah. The way, the way Judy that, finished in the back, I, I'm, I'm not the biggest Judy guy, but the way he finished strong with Russ was actually pretty crazy. I could see him being a wide receiver one. Well, you got a running back. So, running back, I have – it's that's more top-heavy where I have Eckler and then, like, Pierce – or Eckler, Pierce, David Montgomery. I did add Gibbs in this last draft. Okay. So I have both Detroit running backs. I like both of them individually. It feels weird having them both good. in a lineup, we'll have, though. I think one or both of them will be Could really good. Could this be like a Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara yeah. type beat? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, now I'm getting super optimistic about my own players. For sure. I'm going to let Austin Eckler just ride into the sunset on my team. I'm doing that and go fade me, too. Yeah. No one will value him correctly. So right. it's just like... Whatever, give me another eighteen touchdowns for a year. <laughs> yeah, this guys. might be this might be it for Austin Eckler, but I, I'm fine just letting players die. I Eckler think, kind of feels like he's going to hang around for a long time. He, he, you think so? Yeah, because one, like you could just see how he like takes care of himself so well. He also is a dude that like in his worst, year, like say he turned you know thirty, thirty one, thirty two. I feel like he'll become a role player that's really valuable. In fantasy, like even if you know Eckler maybe starts to break down a little bit, maybe his carries dwindle from like 200 down to like 75, 80. But I bet he still gets like 80 targets a season, even in his older age years. So he basically like devolves into Danny Woodhead. Yes, yeah. Like I think worst case scenario, you're going to get 
Eckler as like Danny Woodhead for the last like two, three years of his career. That'd be pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, literally, I think for him as he gets older, especially in that type of a workload too, he probably has a better chance to stay healthy. Right. Like his, 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 He'll his, catch his, 80 passes a year for His a while. age at like a full workload like he's been taking these last few years, I, I worry he's going to get an injury. Eckler's going to go to the Patriots and catch 500 passes. Oh, uh, Hood, Hoodie years. would Hoodie would have every – he would be James White on steroids. That's what I mean. That's where my mind went exactly. It's like you don't even need to get more than 50 carries to be like a monster. Yeah. I mean, he, he does have that – Elite pass catching prowess, um, and when he gets the ball in his hands, he's liable to score any anytime he's inside the fifty. So I like that. So who wants to buy Austin Eckler between you two? Uh, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's traded out for the day. I think that's really all we got though uh, on the league. I, I don't know if, uh, if there was anything else you wanted to discuss about the league. I think we covered pretty much everything. Yeah, no, that was a good breakdown. The, this it's a fun episode to do like this because you get so much context behind the teams and like the way you're thinking about it relative to the other teams in the league. It's like, oh, I'm kind of a contender, but I'm not there yet. Let me grab a guy that like really gets me there now. This this see. Mike and I don't do a lot of planning on our shows. We'll do like, all right, we're going to talk about this subject, but we don't sit here and have like a big long note sheet because a lot of times unplanned, some fun things can happen. Like we didn't have, other than the three trades and just doing the trade show, we kind of let this happen. And then you got to see the context of the league, right? We, so we gave you the settings, how it works. We talked about the teams. We talked about the trades that went down. Then we actually happened to have someone here Tony that's also in the league and you got to see an actual trade happen live. And I think magic. That's, that's hard to... When you just get a trade on a trade show, I mean, we try to do our best job of talking through different points, like if this team looks like this and whatever context we do have. But it's hard to really give you what your league is without seeing stuff like this. Like, that's the, that's the context of it. I can't tell you what Tony's going to value. That's on him. That's the same for all your league mates. So I think that was a really cool thing to do at the end. Yeah, that was fun. I think we should definitely put this episode up on our channel, too. I got a good idea. Do it. We edit it before you put it up and then be like, no one can put it up on their channel. <laughs> Hit them with the we copyright, copyright infringement. Yeah. Hit your channel with a strike. Yeah. BDG laying the smack Hit you with the lawsuit. Yeah. Nick's out here bodying. That you, you know, want a 5D chess right Nick, here. Yeah, Nick's out here bodying his uh, his employees, telling them to come in here and make a trade on set. Then he's, you know, taking the footage. It's going to be on his channel. He's just bodying everybody. You don't get to where I am by, by being nice. I love it, man. All right, cool. Well, uh, if you're watching this on my channel, make sure you go follow Adam's channel. Yeah. That'll be linked below. Yeah, uh, you got to go to the South Harmon Fantasy channel to do so. <laughs> All right, we love you guys. Peace. Later.